Well, good morning. Um, I've been out buying at my local car boot sales, flea markets again, and I've got a real nice little haul video to share with you, show you some of the things I've bought. Um, let's see what you think of them. Uh, my name is Walter O'Neill, and I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, and hope to flip them for a profit. Stick around, and we'll find out what I got. Okay, so I have had some really, really cheap pieces today and a couple of real star lots. Um, let's start off with my favorite of the day. Well, one of my favorites of the day. We have um, an original work um, in sort of charcoal, pastel, and watercolor. And it looks to be like a First World War RAF soldier. It's absolutely spectacular quality in the painting. Now, it is a signed example. Robert Itchen, A-I-T-C-H-E-N. Now, I have looked on Google, and there are works sold by him. And all anybody has put down for the artist's biography is 20th century British artist. Doesn't give me a lot of info. I can't find a lot on him. But there are pieces that have gone through uh, sale rooms of his works. But again, you have to pay all these different companies to get the results. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Look at the frame. The frame is absolutely stunning, beautifully carved. I'm hoping you can see that carving coming down here. The entire frame is absolutely stunningly carved. So, beautiful watercolour, possibly RAF uh, pilot or something along them lines. You've got the flying goggles and the microphone, so I'm assuming RAF. Um, it has had a bit of water damage. It's got a water line running along here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's nothing major, but there is a water mark there. And on the reverse, you can see it's had, it's been around water. But there's no actual damage to the frame, but to the piece. There's a little bit of rust up here where one of the nails got wet. And as I say, that water mark there, nothing major. If you wanted, you could trim the paint in, but I wouldn't. It's absolutely stunning. Now, I was down Splot Market a few weeks ago, and I had an absolute atrocious day buy-in. <coughs> I know, it doesn't happen often. With the amount of dealers I have provided me with good gear, it doesn't happen often. Anyway, I'm walking out to my car, all sad, all depressed, and there's a gentleman just stood by my car admiring this. And I looked like, anyway, that's nice. And I walked over, and it was early in the morning. It was still re relatively darkish. And we couldn't establish if it was a print, if it was a uh, live graph, if it was uh, watercolour in the light depth, and it was just really difficult under the glass. It was stinking dirty. Anyway, he said, well, give me 20 quid for it, which I done. So about $27, $28. Is that not absolutely beautiful? Um, retail, I would expect that to go somewhere between two and 300 so I made up for the day. It is absolutely spectacular. I love the um, you know, the quality of it, and I love the subject matter. So really, really pleased. I got a few little cheapies to share with you. First of all, we have this brass sort of fighter jet uh, on a ball on tripod feet. Now, loads of these little planes done in brass, um, mostly from sort of World War II onwards, uh, the planes are. They're nothing special, but uh, people like to collect them for some reason. And that cost me a whole four pounds, so about $6. And you'd be surprised, some people are asking crazy money for some of the planes. This one I purchased. Now, I don't know whether you saw a few weeks ago, I'd done a video on um, Italian Onyx. And some people were asking as low as a fiver for an Onyx box, and some people were asking 300 and some people were selling a mid-range. Well, this one, again, we have an Italian Onyx box with brass. Now... One way of identifying this as Italian, 
Do you see that there? A tongue guarantee no. GSE. Well, if you come across to Google Translator, if you click on auto detect language, it'll uh, and then type in Otone Garantino. It comes up as Italian guaranteed brass is what it means. So we know it's an Italian box. <coughs> and that label will stay on there just to prove that it's an Italian box. So we have a mid-century Italian onyx box mounted in brass with lion claw feet. Beautiful little thing. And that owes me a whole one pound. Or about one and a half dollars or less than one and a half dollars. Should comfortably be 30, 40, 50 pounds, no problem at all. Especially in the fact I can prove it's Italian with that label. I've had my first bit of Spanish porcelain in a while. Um, I've had a beautiful little Neo figurine, uh, Neo Biladro. Um, I love this because she's holding the little dog. Anything with animals um, is always more popular. There's the Mark Nail by Ladro. If you get a Ladro, it's at least double the price. That one was £7, uh, so about $11. And I'm hoping to achieve about £20, £20, give or take, something like that for this lady. Uh, £20, £25. <coughs> then I have this little beautiful terrier in almost a... Let me see. Trying to think of the name of the glaze. It's like a treacle glaze. Really nice finish on there. I think it's a Welsh terrier, uh, or a terrier anyway. It's mold number 3177. That's the shape. And then it's by Silvac England. Everything you want to know, 317 and the Silvac England. As I just said, anything to do with animals, I buy all the time. People love animals. And this was four pounds, so about seven dollars. And I would like to achieve somewhere around 15 to 20 pounds for this. This piece is signed Walter. Uh, yes, not by me. And it is Isle of Wight Blast dated 1983, August 1983. It is all signed up on the base. Um, beautiful. It's got a turned over rim. So this rim's been turned over. So it's up and over. Always a sign of good quality then. And it's just a nice opaque mottled clear glass bowl. Bit of art glass there from the Isle of Wight. Um, and that was three pounds, so about five dollars. And again, I'd like to think that's about 15, 20 pounds, no problem at all. It's a nice collectible bit of art glass. Next piece um, is a delayed uh, item from Malvern. Now, I forgot I had it. Um, it was upstairs in my boy's room waiting to be filmed and it gone behind some stuff. So we have this, a rather large solid bronze plaque. Now the plaque is French. It is signed, and Union Nationale des Société Tour de France, Honor Patrie. And you have um, Victory here with the wings, carrying an armed soldier. At a feet, you have the olive branch. It is a signed example down here, and this is a large example probably eight to 10 inches just for the bronze. And it is in bronze on this beautiful oak frame. Now, this is a replica, if I share. This is a replica of the medals. Uh, these are the original um, medals. And that is the exact thing there. And if I come across here, Society de France medal, 1886 by H. Dubos in bronze. All right, so that's the medal. But you come down, and it gives you the description. You have victory holding up, carrying an armed man, uh, at feet the olive branch and all the rest of it. Behind it, a kneeling soldier, 
uh, house, a gallop, distance, a church, clock, uh, and so forth. The issue date on the original medal is 1886, done in bronze in Paris, Paris Mint. Now, obviously, this isn't a medal. It's a, that medal here was 58 millimeters diameter. This is huge. So I started searching uh, the web looking for them, and I did manage to find one. Here's one that had sold through, well, I presume eBay. Uh, yeah, the source was eBay, but you can't find anything on it now. And it's a 19th century bronze relief plaque shooting and well, there you go. It is what it is. That's the identical thing to what I have here. But I can't find the price. Half a meter square, Neil enough. 17 inches by 17 inches. That's about right. So they're out there. Uh, or at least one other one is out there. Um, real unusual thing. Now, this in Morgan, I paid 100 for which is about $135, $140. Uh, it is a signed example. Just, well, the bottom here. There's the reverse. It did have some paper on there, but I took that off. So I wanted to see what was behind it, see if there was any information. Um, but there we have it. Again, I think it's two to three hundred sims the painting. Um, it's a very, very decorative bronze. It's French, it's signed. It's 19th century. So yeah, I, I'm thinking two to three hundred on the bronze, two to three hundred on the uh, painting. Now, these are absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. One has got some damage on there. The other's perfect. Now, these are fully hand-painted. They have a Chinese Ming uh, mark painted on the reverse. However, I'm not 100% convinced they're Chinese. I got a lot more research needed to do on them. Um, I think they could even be Japanese with an, a Chinese Ming mark. But that's just my feeling. Uh, a lot more work needed, and I mean a lot more work. As you know, I'm still studying Chinese porcelain, so it's not as simple as just pick something up and know exactly what it is. Um, you can see this one around the mark. It has that star crack in, around the mark. Did you see that? But uh, the mark reads, Great Ming, I think it's Wan Li or something like that. Um uh, Anyway, Ming Mark, hand-painted porcelain plates. Um, these are for research. I bought them in Malvin, only paid a tenner for the pay. So about $14, $13, $14 uh, for the pay. And they are beautiful. Even though they're paid, there are distinct differences. Look at the difference in the mark, and there's distinct differences in the blue in the actual painting. They're done by different hands. That's what I'm trying to say. Even though they're the same pattern and everything, two different people have painted these plates. The mark is far better on this one than on this one. Uh, the blue is a lot deeper on this one. And the gilding is far superior on this left plate to the right plate. But they are both beautiful examples. So they are my going in my research pile until I figure out exactly what they are. Lots of research needed on them. <clears throat> There'll be um, a video coming out very shortly. Uh, I have pretty much finished my bathroom, thankfully. Yay, I know. Um, so there'll be a video coming out. Um, I know it's an antique channel. However, I've had a lot of interest in people wanting to see the video of the making of the bathroom. So you get to see the ripped out room and then the step-by-step -step process of the bathroom being installed. That's probably going to be the next video after this. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I haven't really got any more goodies I want to share with you today. So a nice short one today. So 
Let me know what you think of the watercolor. If anybody knows or has an art subscription um, and is able to find anything out about the Robert Itchin, Itchin, the artist anyway, uh, I would be very grateful. Other than that, thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.